Hi guys! You should be ready to read this first chapter with me um, of our new book, Beast of Buckingham Palace. Um, if you haven't done your first task, um, which is write the prediction of what you think the book's going to be, stop this video, go back, write your prediction first before you listen to this bit, okay? Um, but what I did forget to mention in my first video is there will be a riddle of the day, like we used to do in school, okay? I know you love them, so I thought I'd make a bit of effort and put them on the wall for you. I'm not going to be reading them out, so you're going to have to pay super duper attention to our videos. Um, so if you can work it out, let me know, email me, okay? Or you can put it on the discussions page, up to you. Um, but yeah, there'll be a new one every single day, okay? So keep your eyes peeled. Right, chapter one. I'll show you the picture. This chapter is called Dark. Okay, those two pages are actually quite dark. There's a picture of some sort of soldier standing in front there. Okay, right. It was noon and the sky was black. There had been darkness over the kingdom for half a century. For many, many years before, the people of the earth had not taken care of their home. They had burned down all the forests, reducing every last tree to ash. They pumped the rivers, lakes and seas full of waste, killing all the fish. They had dug deeper and deeper under the ground for oil until the planet was hollow to its core. Eventually, the earth took its revenge. The ice caps of the Antarctic and the, Antar and the Antarctic melted. The floods were mi so mighty, the whole countries became submerged under water. Violent earthquakes shook entire cities to the ground. All that was left behind was piles and piles of rubbish. Volcanoes erupted, plumping billions of tons of ash into the air. Without the sunlight, the crop withered and died. Nothing could grow. The kingdom was plunged into internal winter. It was the only world Alfred knew. He was already 12 years old, but he had never ever seen sunlight. Often, he dreamed about how it must have been to feel the sun on your face or run through a field of tall grass or swim in a sunlit sea. But it was just that, a dream. The boy had seen pictures of the sun in the books and marvelled at it. A perfect circle of gold. Now the moon and the stars had become invisible too. Alfred would spend hours and hours imagining how the night sky must have looked with a thousand little lights twinkling in the blackness. He was one of those children who liked nothing more than being alone with his imagination. In truth, he had little choice. Having been sickly his whole life, soon after he was born, he became ill. As a baby, Alfred had not been expected to survive, but survive he did. Just. The child was as pale as snow and as thin as dust. He wore thick glasses to aid his poor eyesight. Often, Alfred was so weak he would stay in bed all day. Thank goodness, all around his bed were piles and piles of books. Books, books and more books. Books about animals, books about space, books about trees, books about dinosaurs, and even books about books. Books about history were his favourite. The trouble was that there was a strict curfew in the building where Alfred lived. Night was the most dangerous time. That was when there was almost no chance of an attack from the outside. Lights had been out at eight o'clock sharp by order of the king. Anyone caught with lights on would be severely punished. Punishments were brutal in the kingdom. Those empowered returned to medieval forms of torture. The thumbscrew, the iron maiden, the breaking wheel, the rack, the skull's bridle, the rat's dungeon, the head crusher and the iron chair. Despite the strict rules, the boy loved his books so much that he would carry on reading by candlelight under his bed covers. The night that our story begins, Alfred was doing just that. He was reading a weighty leather bound book about the kings and queens of Britain through the ages. The first known one was Alfred the Great. He had become a ruler an impossibly long time ago in 871. The boy was named after the first king, but it was hard to believe anybody could describe this Alfred as great. He felt anything but. 
as the boy was devouring the story of the beheading of King Charles I in 1649, a deafening sound rocked the room. Kaboom! Alfred dropped his book, thud, and his candle. He nearly set the covers alight. Smothering the flames and blowing the candle out, whoosh! He pulled off his bed covers. A huge explosion outside had illuminated the boy's bedroom with glowing red, orange and yellow light. Alfred slid out of bed and, using his strength, limped over to the huge bay window. Just those few steps left him painfully out of breath. <coughs> he leaned out of the window frame to steady himself. Alfred's bedroom was high up on the top floor from here. He could see far across London. A building was ablaze, but not just any building. St Paul's Cathedral. This historic structure, perhaps one of the most famous in the world, had been destroyed. Its huge white dome cracked as if there was nothing more than just an egg. Huge plumes of back smoke billowed high into the air. Oh no, thought Alfred, no, not St Paul's. He had seen many London landmarks destroyed over the years. Nelson's column had been toppled to the ground. Crunch! The London Eye had plunged into the river, river Thames. Splash! The Royal Albert Hall roof had caved in after a bomb had blasted it into pieces. However, none of these was as sacred as St Paul's. This was a new low. The cathedral had been built after the Great Fire of London in 1666. The glorious structure had miraculously survived the Blitz when the Nazi bombs rained down on London during World War II but now was burning to the ground, Alfred's next thought was revolutionaries. They said all the landmarks of one of their attacks. The boy had never met anyone from the top secret organisation, but the Lord Protector had taught him much about them. From when Alfred had been told the re revolutionaries hated the fact that the power had returned to the king, they wanted to overthrow him and behead him just like the round heads that done to the Charles I during the English Civil War. These revolutionaries stood only for death and destruction. That is why the Lord Protector said it needed to be crushed at all costs. There was a burst of machine gu gunfire. No! The distant sound of shouts. Ah! Was that a scream? Alfred shivered. As much as he wanted to look away, he couldn't. Every day there were attacks over London, but explosions to this scale were rare. The boy pressed his hand up against a cold, thick glass and looked out of at the devastation. There was a, the kingdom Alfred would one day have to inherit. Okay, that was the end of chapter one. Um, this chapter, let me just remind myself, was called Dark. Chapter two is called Lionheart, okay? So I'll be uploading that video tomorrow morning, um, ready for you to listen and hear me read it out. Um, don't forget to look at the files on Hub for your um, home learning plan for this week, okay? That'll explain all the tasks you need to do after I read each chapter. Um, any problems, any questions, don't forget to email me. You have my email number. If not, it's on Scoop. Um, yeah, look forward to seeing your work, guys. Bye.